just saying. Y'all, I broke the first one. I, I already lost, y'all. I, I lost. Don't kill the messenger, y'all. Don't kill the messenger. I'm just here to tell you the truth. Well then, if it ain't the consequences of my own actions. <laughs> I needed the time away to break that addiction. Since when do you have to prove anything to a god? Why am I getting added into this equation when it has nothing to do with me? I know the Lord did not make me to be quiet. <laughs> Um, what's up, y'all? Hola <laughs> and hello, welcome back to Time with Tally. But more specifically today, I want to introduce to you guys today a new segment on my channel called Talks with Tally. It's been a bit, y'all. I've been missing you so, so much. A lot has been going on behind the scenes. If you don't have me on my socials, on my Instagram, you probably won't know, but like you guys last saw, there's been a huge change to the YouTube channel, to the purpose of it, all this other stuff. And so that is going to continue, but now it's full force. <laughs> Remember I used to tell you guys that I never do anything that's, you know, halfway. It's always either zero or a hundred. And most of the time it's usually a hundred. Yeah, that's what's happening. So <laughs> I've been taking some time off from the gym uh, just due to actually exactly what I'm gonna talk about with you guys today. It was absolutely necessary. Buckle up for this change. I hope you all have been well. I've been praying for every single one of you and the channel. So just a really quick, like a preface, uh, this part of my channel now, this segment, this podcast, whatever it is that you wanna say that it is, will now officially be a part of my channel that is solely dedicated just to God. Actually, the channel itself is actually all dedicated to God. So this part of my channel is specifically related to my faith talks. You guys know I like to talk, but in general, the Lord has also been placing on my heart some words to share with people and not keep just to myself. So that's what this piece of my channel is for now. I know the Lord did not make me to be quiet. <laughs> Do not dismay, my friends. Time with Tally is still a thing, and I still will be continuing my lifestyle vlogs and things like that. Will they be as frequent? Maybe not. You will still be seeing me going to the gym and whatnot, but I will get into the details of how that also might look differently just in a little bit. Here we go. I'm back at the gym. It's been two months. Months? A month and a half. Something like that. Anyways, long enough for me. Y'all know. <laughs> so without further ado, let's hit an upper body day. So a lot of you might be thinking, oh my gosh, here we go. She's about to start preaching and all this other stuff. Uh, well, you know what? First of all, I'm going to be very blunt with y'all because I always have been. I'm going to be real because I always have been. Even when I was like doubting God's existence and everything else like that, even before like when I started the channel, I actually used to always like pray to God and I was like, you know what, God? Please let my channel be a, a vehicle for people to see that there are people out there with good hearts. I always said, God, please let me be the type of person that like when they see my videos, they see your love for people in my videos. So therefore, now that I feel like I'm finally dedicating all of this time and this effort, and I've taken this time off to really separate myself and spend time with God, I'm actually finally able to do that and he's answering the prayer, just not in the way that I expected, but his ways are always better, you know? So I would love if you guys stayed for the rest of this video and received a word from God that he has placed on my heart for you guys. But if you don't like it and you wanna unsubscribe, that's perfectly fine, no hate. Do whatever makes you happy. Yeah. Also, before I begin saying anything, I need you guys to understand this is not a judgment on anybody, okay? This is what I have learned from my experience and what I have done. This is what I have learned from my own journey. But maybe you can relate. And if anybody ever told you that it's not okay for you to learn new information and change your mind, they're bugging. A lot of you have been asking where have I been, <laughs> which I appreciate the questions and the concern. Thank you so much. And a lot of you have been asking people around me, has Tally been going to the gym? Well, the answer is no. And trust me, it's harder on me than on you, I promise. But truthfully, the reason I haven't been is because of this. This exact video right now that I'm about to record and share with you guys is the exact reason. This right here was my hardest pill to swallow when following Christ and starting that walk with him. When I finally gave my life back to Christ, not like it was ever mine to begin with, but this was definitely the most difficult thing for me to unlearn. And this time specifically that I have taken away to spend time solely with God and building a foundation with my relationship with God, has been absolutely necessary. I truly felt like I needed a full stretch.
start over. I hit a huge reset button for me to solely focus on God first and foremost, above all else. And before I get into this word, which I already prayed about in the car, I don't want anybody to get their panties in a bunch. This, like I said, is not a condemnation, not a judgment. This is my testimony, what I have been through, experienced, done, and learned. So the title for today's message is Bodybuilding Equals God. The definition of idolatry is the action of or the practice of worshiping idols. It's basically the veneration of any type of image or object representing or regarded as the embodiment of a god or a deity of some kind or some type of divinity. I'm glad I haven't lost it. Romans chapter 1, 21 to 25, it says, For although they knew God, they never glorified him as God, nor gave him thanks, gave thanks to him. But their thinking became futile, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Although they claimed to be wise, they became fools, and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images made to look like a mortal human being, and birds, and animals, and reptiles. Therefore God gave them over in sinful desires of their hearts to sexual impurity for the degrading of their bodies with one another. They exchanged the truth about God for a lie and worshiped and served created things rather than the creator who is forever praised amen I used to do this y'all in case you didn't know in case you didn't realize what I was doing I used to do this I used to partake in this I used to glorify myself I used to put myself on a pedestal I used to put my powers and my capabilities of my body on a pedestal sometimes without even knowing it I was always a pretty humble person with other people I thought like I never believed that I was better than anybody else but I did believe that I possessed a power that caused me to be able to manifest my own life and dream body my own results in this world I glorified my own power even though I'm literally skin and bones that's a problem reverse grip now I praise myself and my transformation as if I was fully responsible for it and that no other factors had a part to play I put myself my body my capabilities the power I thought I had above everything else, including God. I never bluntly or overtly thought that I was better than God because I was raised in church, I knew better than that. But even then, inadvertently, I just thought I was my own God and that I didn't need God, which is just as bad. I subconsciously allowed myself to be in competition with some of the strongest women and the other people in the fitness industry. I, I don't think it was ever to be better than them because that's not ever my thought process, but it was always, I would always put myself in competition with what they had. Long story short, I used others' successes to motivate me to keep me pushing. I used others, mm, Lord, well-known people. I used them as markers for my own success. So inadvertently, I was also unknowingly, subconsciously, I was also idolizing them. Call me out, Lord. Okay, cool. Surprise, surprise, money, fame, sickening physiques. They don't equal success or happiness. The real happiness, the true kind, the everlasting kind. Instead of focusing on what God had for my life, which is way better than anything I could do or anybody else on this earth, I allowed the counterfeit temporary happiness to fill me up. I put others as people of success and markers for me to follow behind in their footsteps. Other human beings. And in all actuality, I was actually just covering up a void that I had in me all along. The void of true everlasting happiness that doesn't go away and then come back. That's exactly what was happening when I was in the gym. I would be feeling great while I was here a few hours afterwards maybe, but if I didn't come back, it was still emptying itself out, that void. Mm. Truly, it was Jesus. It was Jesus that I was missing because instead of looking for Jesus, I ended up building up my ego and my pride, which in reality was all just a defense mechanism to make myself feel better about myself, make myself feel more valuable to my own self. So isn't it so funny how even though we create ourselves to be our own gods, we still are always trying to make ourselves feel or esteem ourselves as valuable to our own self? Since when do you have to prove anything to a god? I also showed this by also coming to the gym five to six days out of the week for hours at a time, sometimes even multiple times a day. It was like this incessant addiction and the pride and the ego and the building yourself up, overcoming the difficulty and hyping yourself. It literally only feeds the lack temporarily. For me, this is my story. Working out is not a bad thing, you know, staying healthy and overcoming milestones is not a bad thing. It's actually biblical to remain physically active and healthy and take care of the temple that God has given you because you only get one, but not at the expense of your spirit, your soul not to the extent of worshiping it. 
there have to be limits to things and that's why I needed the time away to break that addiction and break that foundation that I had prior created on my own. Because remember, that was the original plan from the enemy, to become greater than God. Come on. So he tries to get us to do the same thing unknowingly. A lot of us use working out as a means of therapy for excess feelings, whether it be too much anger, too much sadness, or lack thereof feeling. <laughs> we use it as a means of like blowing our top off basically and then and or feeling nothing and then afterwards you feel great. Just be careful to not force it. He has sent us his Holy Spirit, which the Bible says is our counselor, our advocate, right? So in John 14, 15 to 18, it says, Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commands and I will ask the Father and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever. He is the spirit of truth. The world is unable to receive him because it doesn't see him or know him, but you do know him because he remains with you and will be in you. Verse 18 says, I will not leave you as orphans. Not only do you miss out on God and getting to know Him, but you also lose your own identity of who you are, who He has created you to be, when the gym becomes everything that you are. And this is not specifically just to bodybuilding only. I'm talking about in general worshiping your own body, worshiping fitness, worshiping the gym, everything else that's not God. And that could be money, success, women, your relationship, your family, it could be anything. Food. Just know that you're more than that. I want to tell you guys a quick story so I can get back into the workout, but long story short, in case you haven't heard of Daniel in the lion's den, that's a very popular biblical story, right? Well, I'm going to tell you a story from that time that actually has to do with Daniel, but it's not the one about the lions, okay? There was a king in this time called King, I'm going to say his name one time, and from now on I'm just going to call him either the king or King Nebu. The king's name is King Nebuchadnezzar. Long story short, he used to be troubled by dreams, right? Let, let me sit down really quick. So long story as short as possible that I can make it, this king used to have lots of troubling dreams, right? And so he had two really crazy dreams. And in the first dream, it was so troubling to him that he actually called his advisors, his dream interpreters, and the people that worked for him. He said to them, if you guys cannot interpret my dream, actually, you all die. But guess what? I'm not gonna tell you my dream. That's crazy. He was so scared by this dream. He was like, I need people to prove themselves. But, of course, in this time, Daniel was actually an advisor for him. Everybody's included. Daniel's like, oh, heck no, not me. Like, I didn't do nothing. I ain't have nothing to do with this. What are you talking about? Why am I getting added into this equation when it has nothing to do with me? Long story short, Daniel comes in and he's like, give me some time and the Lord will reveal to me what your dream means. So he goes to the king and he lays out his dream. After God had revealed to him the dream, he literally lays out his whole dream for him. The king didn't tell him this. It was just revealed to him by God. Crazy. So basically it was like this large, very large colossal statue, right, in his dream. From the top to the bottom, from the head down to the feet, it was created in materials that they descend and decrease in value as you go along. So the head was made of gold. And then I think it was the chest made of bronze. Let's see. The head was made of gold and descending down the body, silver, bronze, iron, clay. The head was his kingdom. That's what it signified. And then the kingdoms following him would be inferior to his. That's what that means. And then out of nowhere in his dream, a stone came from the mountain and basically crushed the statue and then the stone settled and then it became a great mountain that filled the entire earth but then he had another dream because God is gracious God was warning him via dreams we just don't be wanting to hear God's warnings the second was about this huge tree it had beautiful leaves it reached the heavens and it was abundant in fruit and all the animals of the earth came to it to feed and to refuge and then a holy one from the sky well from heaven ordered for the tree to be cut down and let all the animals flee from it but leave the stump and its roots it says, let him be drenched with the dew from the sky and share the plants of the earth with wild animals and be given the mind of an animal. Long story short, it was said in his dream, prophesied in his dream that he was about to go insane. This is so that the living will know that the most high is ruler over human kingdoms. He gives them to anyone that he wants. Like a year later, he was like admiring his kingdom and stuff, right? Remember those two dreams were warnings that he needs to relax with hyping himself up, glorifying himself, worshiping himself and making himself an idol. That's what he did. He's like walking around on his roof or whatever it is and he's literally staring at his kingdom. He's like, wow, how beautiful. And he starts bragging and gloating about his power and majestic glory. His words, not mine. He must have forgotten what the Lord warned him about a year ago before that because Daniel actually interpreted what both dreams meant to him in that time but he did not heed the warning well then if it ain't the consequences of my own actions <laughs> so then he became insane he started roaming the earth eating like animals all because he was making himself like God and glorifying himself and everything that he could do this is a lesson to not be taking God's glory from him and building yourself up to be invincible because we're not <laughs> 
It ends well, though. The king himself ends up actually coming to, and he says his sanity has returned to him, which is basically when he finally encounters God after everything, and he realizes God is the only God, and he's the only one that deserves the glory, that we should always submit to God everything that he has given us to as a gift. And so then he started writing and he gave God the glory for all the things that he allowed him to have and to be because without God, he wouldn't have it, he said, you know? And it's true. He went from saying like crazy prideful things because that those were not the only two words that he said. He said some crazy prideful stuff that I can't even quote right now because that's crazy. That's wild. He's wild for saying that. He was very pretentious. Read it, Book of Daniel in the Bible. But then he concludes with his testimonial that he wrote in the Bible. It says, At the time my sanity returned to me, I was reestablished over my kingdom, and even more greatness came to me. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise, exalt, and glorify the King of the heavens, because all his works are true, and his ways are just. He is able to humble those who walk in pride. Daniel 4, 36-37 crazy. Even the devil himself attempted to tempt Jesus. Literally God himself, the guy that created the word, the earth, everything. He attempted to have him worship the devil instead. He said, worship me and I can give you all of this earth, all these kingdoms. First of all, sir, get it together. He created everything that you're able to own right now. That's like the employee trying to convince the owner. Here, I'll give you this. Everything that you've given me, I'll give you this. You're bugging. It says so in Matthew 4.10, he said, Go away, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Crazy. It says so in Exodus 23 to 5, right? It says, Do not serve other gods besides me. Do not make an idol for yourself. Hello. Whether in the shape of anything from the heavens, above or on the earth, below or in the waters under the earth. Do not bow and worship to them and do not serve them because I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God. Y'all, I broke the first one. I, I already lost, y'all, I, I lost. Acts 10, 26 to 27. Peter, Jesus' disciple, has an encounter with a man that was not a Jew, but that man also believed in God and he did charitable deeds for the Jewish people. God recognized this and used this man to find Peter and then this is when the churches began. We are all one church under God, right? But this was to break the barriers between the Jews, the Romans, Gentiles, technically the others that were not the Jews. <laughs> Anyways, God did some of his work and he got these two to meet by giving them both visions on how to find each other, basically. But when Cornelius met Peter and saw that what God has told him was real life, he wasn't just hallucinating. Cornelius is the other guy. He fell at Peter's feet and he mistakenly began to worship him. And the verses say that. But Peter lifted him up and said, stand up. I myself am also a man. <sighs> we are influential to others. Taking God's glory from him is stealing, y'all and it is not our glory to take in the first place. Not only that, like we make physical things, inanimate objects gods, lifeless objects, but sometimes even other people. We idolize other people, you know, this including, like I said before, the people that we're in relationships with, people that are family, people that are celebrities, influencers, other preachers, and other people of the church of God, the body of God. Like I've seen people idolize prophets and leaders in the churches nowadays too, don't get it twisted. Like there was this one situation in the Bible where Paul and Barnabas, they are preaching the word of Jesus, right? They're performing the signs and the miracles and the people, instead of listening to that, listening to their words about God and God being the one responsible for the signs and the wonders and the miracles, they began to worship Paul and Barnabas, like as if they were gods. Acts 14, 15 to 17, it says, People, why are you doing these things? We are people also, just like you. And we are proclaiming good news to you that you turn from these worthless things to the living God who made the heaven, who made the earth, the sea, and everything in them. Because the people in that time were worshiping idols that they had created. You know, his word does say he's a jealous God. Not only did we already just read that in one verse, but he says it somewhere else too. Exodus 34, 14, he says, you are never to bow down to another God, for he is a jealous God and not for nothing. Let's be honest here. When you're in a relationship with somebody and they're openly and bluntly right in your face, cheating and or disrespecting you, talking to somebody else, calling somebody else beautiful, worshiping somebody else, admiring somebody else, you're gonna tell me that you don't get jealous? Protective? Yeah, that's what I thought. I'm not saying that God is a toxico, but I'm saying that everything he expects honestly is what he deserves. 
Is he wrong? So I thought, and don't you guys worry, you're pretty little behinds. I'm gonna get a good workout in, but this is definitely taking precedence. Don't worry about that. I'm just here to remind you that the answer is him. The answer is fully submitting your life to Christ and what he wants from you for your life. The biggest thing truly is obedience, but everybody hates that word for some reason. I've actually always personally had issues and I've had beef with the word submission because I always saw it as when someone is submitting to something else or someone else, you're always seen as less than the other person or maybe not even worthy of. But what Jesus teaches about submission is actually the total opposite. Submission is actually the highest form of power and it's the key to obtaining everything that we ever could need. He teaches us that he loves us so much that he surrendered his life because he could have easily said no. He chose to surrender his life for us on that cross. The good news, the gospel that teaches us that if he loves you, and he does, because there's no greater love than a love that would actually sacrifice their own life for another person. This is telling us that he obviously has a purpose for our life. If he woke you up today, he's not done with you yet. Spoiler alert, you're not just meant to live on this earth and then die without a purpose. I'm just saying. Don't kill the messenger, y'all. Don't kill the messenger. I'm just here to tell you the truth. Your purpose here is far greater than you could ever imagine. Honestly, my only advice and suggestion as someone that loves you, that cares for you, and every single other person that's on the other side of the screen right now that's hearing my voice, is that if you open your heart and your mind just a little to him, he will guide you on what you're supposed to be doing. That's what he did for me, actually. He actually loves us more than we could ever possibly even love ourselves. So imagine when you find your value in him, your mental is gonna stop tormenting you, and it's also gonna stop having all these physical repercussions on your body. When I say that he's the answer to everything, I'm not kidding. He literally healed everything inside of me. He healed my mental and my spiritual everything and that all has trickled down into my physical I'm about to finish up and really just finish off strong with this workout in a minute but I just wanted to leave you guys with this I wanted to remind you that he is the psychologist he is the doctor he is the therapist he is the everything that you could ever need the father the brother the friend and for those that always want to take things so freaking literally I'm not saying mental health isn't real and I'm not saying that it's not legitimate or should it be paid attention to or that meds aren't necessary this is all real life as well I'm not negating that and even if you don't think that any of those may be your problem areas I need you to dig a little deeper because without him I promise there's always gonna be one area at least in your life where you're lacking whether it be your relationships your love your finances your career whatever it may be he is your truth he is your counselor he he's your savior from everything bad that this world has to offer a lot of us don't even know that we're sinning until it actually hurts us. This life has nothing to offer except little bits of life that ultimately lead us to death. I'm gonna leave you guys with this and say, lastly, remember that none of us are invincible. We all have a physical expiration date in these bodies and on this earth. And I would rather take my chances wholeheartedly, full force at everlasting life with Jesus in my life and a relationship with him because he's offering that than the latter option, which is not it just also makes more logical sense to be very quite frank and honest if i'm wrong right if christianity is wrong and we just go into oblivion into darkness for no reason when we die then so be it right following jesus has also just made me the best person that i could possibly be and he's still working on me to this day by following him and his example and his teachings and loving him wholeheartedly i have become someone i don't even recognize in the best possible way so if i do that while i'm still here and in turn, that also adds onto my soul eternal everlasting life in heaven. Because if Christianity, if he is right and he's not lying, imagine how much more you would be losing by not following him. It makes logical sense if you think about it. It's risk and probability, y'all, you know? <laughs> I'm taking sacrifices and doing what it is to be a good person at the core and to have righteousness and those types of values in my heart while I live on this earth and treat people with the utmost kindness and truth and respect. Because people like to tend to think that respect is tolerance to ignorance, and that's not the case. Loving someone is telling them the truth whether they like it or not. Righteousness is telling someone when they're being destructive to themselves. Tolerance is accepting whatever it is that somebody else wants to hear and whatever it is that they dictate to be true. Whatever they dictate to be right. I've been there too, like not believing. I was literally saying no to an eternal party with happiness, no sadness, no fights, no drama, no evil, no hurt, no pain, no grief, no feeling less than, no hating myself or others, no more depression, no more anxiety, no more bills. Yeah, I'll take that for 500, thank you.
it just makes sense to follow him. And I promise you, this is not a brainwash. This is not a manipulation. I promise you that my life has been changed. I have been changed and I'm not the same person. And if you want to experience something so supernatural and crazy like that, the door is open for you. It's literally wide open. So I encourage you to open your heart just a little. Ask God to show you who he really is. And he never fails and he always shows up on time. He's a man of his word. And that's the word I have for y'all. I want to remind you that there will continue to be fitness videos on this channel. I don't want you to feel like it's not going to happen. But again, if it is something that you are solely watching my channel for, that's not gonna be the case anymore because I think it's time that we start to actually truly see the truth everywhere. Truth is being shut up nowadays and nobody wants to hear it. Well, if not many wanna speak up and speak the truth and take a stand, then I'd rather roll with the few. So again, like I said, the fitness videos will continue, but they shall not reign. For the glory is always God's and everything that he has done in my life up until this point has been a blessing from him has been grace and mercy from him because I could have been dead law a long time ago, a long time ago. Not only by my own means of me looking for that myself, but also the world wanted to do it to me as well. The enemy, the devil, we rebuke him in Jesus' name. And I think the most beautiful thing about this channel is the fact that you guys are able to see where I came from. My testimony is living proof and I'm sitting in front of you and you're able to see what God has done. And I think that within itself is enough evidence that he is real and that when he steps in, there has to be a change. To be able to witness that change has been a miracle within itself, and him changing me every single day is a miracle within itself. I get to see miracles every single day, y'all. It's an honor to be a witness and to be a vessel in real time. I'm so thankful and grateful to God for this opportunity, and I hope you guys stick around for more. I'm gonna pray for y'all, and we're gonna head out. I'm about to pray in a public gym, oh my gosh. Father God, I wanna thank you so much for the people across the screen right now, Lord. I wanna say thank you for the people that are listening to my voice in this moment, Lord God. I wanna say thank you for the opportunity to be able to speak to them, Lord, to be able to talk to them, Lord God, as I have missed them so much, Lord. I ask in this moment that you bless every single one of their lives, Lord, that they get to encounter you, Lord God, in a way that's undeniable and unshakable, Lord God. Let it be you, Lord God, removing all the gods that they have in their life, all the idols that they have in their life, Lord. Open their hearts, soften their hearts, Lord God, to you so they get to know you, Father, so they get to feel your presence, Lord, and see the things Things that you can do in their life and miracles that you can perform on the daily basis lord let them seek you every single day and create that relationship with you father let them answer the call that you are calling them for father in jesus mighty name i pray over them amen and amen that's all for today y'all i'm gonna see y'all in the next one thank you for spending time with me bye